Hi there. Welcome to ERPA AI's Voice of the Customer Series. I'm Dan Goodstein. I head up the Institute for RPA and AI, and I'm joined today by Edwin Pradeep. He's the global head for the Intelligent Automation COE at Novo Nordisk. Edwin, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Dan. Hope you're doing well. Yes, yeah, great to see you. And um, before we jump in, maybe give everybody a little bit of background on, on you and, and how you got where you are today. Oh, absolutely. I'd love to. So uh, I currently head the uh, Intelligent Automation uh, COE at uh, Novo Nordisk. Uh, it's uh, one of the units which focuses on all uh, aspects of automation. We take care of the technology platforms and uh, all of the operations uh, about uh, the automation uh, across for Novo Nordisk. Uh, been in this uh, current role for uh, the last uh, little more than four and a half years, uh, started off with uh, the plain vanilla RPA. And I think as the technology landscape had progressed, uh, we also have uh, upgraded ourselves to basically look at conversational AI, low-code, no-code platforms where uh, we are into the Microsoft Power Platform and uh, also a little bit in the BPM space. Very interesting. So um, give me a sense of how the, the journey started, right? A lot of our members are you know, in, in kind of one of two phases. They're either trying to figure out where to start or they're trying to figure out where to scale. So I'll ask you about the scale in a moment, but you know, what was, what was the genesis, you know, and, and, and how did you start? Where did you start? How did, how did it go? Okay. So we started off pretty early in the uh, RPA journey, I should uh, say, uh, right about in 2017, uh, we looked at a couple of uh, HR and uh, finance related uh, use cases. And uh, those were really the first uh, drivers. Uh, after that was, uh, there was no uh, looking back. There were continuously cases that uh, uh, we were able to adopt and uh, started off with the plain fledged uh, RPA. Uh, by around 2019 or so, uh, we were uh, pretty much looking at uh, 14, 15 bots. Uh, today we are at about uh, 75 bots uh, when you talk about uh, from the RPA perspective. Uh, multiple business processes, uh, 75 bots run up close to about uh, 200 uh, business processes. And uh, yeah, that's uh, how it has been. And uh, around 2020 was when uh, we started introducing uh, conversational uh, AI because we saw the need for a lot of the chatbots uh, across uh, Novo Nordisk. Um, and, uh, you know, that's where we standardized the tech stack and uh, we brought in uh, the conversational AI BPM. And uh, for the last uh, three years, we have been running the low-code, no-code uh, journey and the citizen development uh, using the Power Platform. So uh, I wouldn't uh, necessarily say it was uh, anything was big bang, but uh, it was uh, initial small baby steps which really worked out well. And subsequently, we were able to uh, show those uh, wins and then uh, really start scaling up. Right, that's uh, how it has uh, basically come on for us. You know, once once a week, I get a conversation, a, a call from a, a client member, uh, Edwin, where you know some 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 surprise, some challenge popped up that they 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 weren't expecting. I, I'm curious, were there any particular ones that uh, you know happened to you guys, and and how did you overcome them? Oh, surprises are uh, quite a few. I mean, uh, the uh, you know <laughs> if, uh, if I have to uh, look at it. Um, you know, the fact that uh, it's in the pharma and the uh, regulatory space, uh, you know, it's always about uh, having the right kind of controls. Um, it's also uh, some of the technical challenges when we are uh, basically looking at, uh, you know, currently we are looking at moving uh, all of our platforms to the cloud. Uh, the way the on-prem works versus the cloud is uh, very different. So uh, all of these are uh, specifics, I think, uh, which really provide us with challenges. But uh, it really gives uh, the team that uh, opportunity to uh, really look at them, not as uh, challenges, uh, look at them as opportunities where we can really uh, push ourselves and do ourselves better. And I think that's what uh, has been testimony to the fact that we have been able to grow so quite rapidly and even expanded our uh, footprint in the automation space pretty fast. So uh, I don't think, uh, uh, you know, there is a dull day where goes by where we don't get a challenge and where uh, we are not uh, scratching our heads thinking how we are going to solve it. But it's always the team's resilience to uh, uh, look at it from different angles. Uh, a lot of different uh, good experts who are there who uh, contribute to their uh, thinking about it and uh, then come up with uh, some really good uh, solutions to solve it. Yeah, and you know, automation and and certainly scaling automation, we've we've learned is is not necessarily easy in in any industry. But but you guys have the added challenge of being in a high profile, highly regulated uh, uh, area, right? With, with confidential, uh, you know, uh, information 
uh, you know, part of your part and parcel to your business. How does that affect what you do and, and, and how you guys do it? Is that an additional challenge or do you find that that's actually part of the, maybe the, the excitement or, or, or at least the, 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 the fun of, uh, of, of trying to solve these problems? Uh, no, I think uh, uh, one of the things is uh, we always learn from a lot of the other systems which is there in the uh, ecosystem. So it, it wasn't necessarily that we had to um, uh, specifically figure out something for uh, RPA, but while uh, we were uh, doing it, uh, on this automation journey, we basically saw uh, all the other IT systems and uh, you know we basically took those uh, uh, learnings and uh, we based it on that uh, foundation and uh, we had uh, basically built it up. And I think uh, overall, when you uh, look at the uh, automation uh, landscape, right, it, it has always uh, evolved. And uh, over a period in time, especially if you uh, look at uh, the technologies which are coming in, uh, previously technologies used to come in uh, pretty much five years apart, but we have started to see a lot more changes coming in at much smaller cycles, sometimes even within months. And I think uh, really being agile uh, to the technology while also uh, taking care of uh, you know all of the controls that is uh, required while bringing in the new technology is uh, an absolute necessity to make it a success. Yeah, I want to ask you about some of those those use cases or, or applications, whatever you're, you're you're able to share. Um, you know, one one of the uh, hotter topics you know on on our network is new use cases, right? Beyond some of the, the traditional or, or early stage kind of back office and, and, and finance and any particular use cases that you guys are, are automating that have been uh, particularly productive? So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, uh, you know, definitely for the scale, it was uh, pretty much run of the mill use cases, which uh, you find uh, in most of the domains. But uh, one particular one uh, stands out, I think, where uh, we had uh, looked at for uh, some of the document uh, creations. Uh, we were able to uh, automate it uh, using the plain fledged RPA and uh, some of the templates. And I think there was a very clever uh, use case um, where it was not ne necessarily a very traditional use case, but I think with some uh, very clever uh, thinking uh, and use of uh, meta tags we were able to uh, automate some of the document uh, documentations which were uh, which was uh, required um yeah that's the one which occurs to me now which is uh, pretty uh, it's doing pretty well uh, currently uh, Dan. and what can you tell us edwin what's what's uh, what's on the agenda for the for the coming months uh, the coming months, uh, of course, uh, with the Gen AI, uh, it has uh, obviously sparked a lot of uh, interest. Uh, we are uh, definitely looking at uh, what is the potential, where is that uh, we can um, uh, utilize it. A uh, lot of uh, good uh, type of uh, use cases. Definitely uh, the first space that we are applying it was uh, within the conversational AI space to uh, automatically look at uh, conversation uh, generation, automatic con uh, conversation generation, and uh, you know some of the similar allied uh, use cases. But uh, there are some very early stage uh, use cases as well, which is uh, currently under uh, discussion, which I will not be able to disclose, but uh, which are pretty interesting. And I think uh, this space is uh, just going to grow more interesting uh, by the day. Uh, you know, uh, every day you uh, get to hear uh, somebody or the other who has uh, done something uh, outstanding or uh, has really looked at some of those use cases from a very different angle and uh, really excited. I think the next uh, couple of years are really going to be very interesting in this space. You mentioned Gen AI and you have you mentioned kind of conversational AI a, a couple of times. Is there any other kind of emerging tech that you're excited about? Um, no, I think uh, uh, currently with, uh, you know, I would say there is uh, the uh, true part of Gen AI and then the hype of Gen AI. But uh, most, uh, if you would have asked me this question, uh, uh, probably last year at this time, uh, Gen AI wouldn't have figured on the list. But I think uh, as of now, uh, pretty much everything has been overshadowed with what uh, Gen AI can uh, promise and what it can uh, deliver. So uh, a lot of the work which is uh, happening there, a lot of the uh, interest which is uh, there is uh, pretty much in that space, uh, Dan. 
Yeah, it's it's amazing, right? I mean, I, I remind people every once in a while that AI existed before Gen AI, but uh, absolutely, so much of the, <laughs> the conversation right now is uh, is around Gen AI. Have you, have you guys, you know, thought about that from the standpoint of weighing the the risk and reward of something, especially you know, like a Chat GPT that's uh, so open source? Yes, in fact, uh, the uh, AI uh, COE within. Um, the Novo Nordisk has uh, created a version of ChatGPT called as the NN ChatGPT, which is absolutely protected and uh, it's not for any of the uh, confidential uh, data, right? So, uh, so that people can have a safe space to go ahead and uh, put in their queries as long as the data is uh, not uh, confidential. But uh, yeah, uh, uh, beyond that, I think uh, uh, people uh, are, uh, you know, you, uh, chat GPT is not something that you can necessarily restrict. Uh, people are going to find uh, ways to uh, access it and uh, find the good potential. I, I really think uh, you should create such playgrounds, very safe uh, playgrounds where people, and give them enough safeguards where people are able to go ahead, uh, experiment, and uh, really find uh, what it can do for uh, each of them. And each one is going to be uh, each user is going to be different there's not going to be uh, a one size fits all when it comes to uh, the gen ai and i think that that's all the more uh, true when it comes to uh, you know uh, people really trying out uh, their own use cases then their own unique uh, ways of uh, uh, using it and uh, getting better at their own job Edwin, what's your advice for for someone watching this who's just starting or about to embark on 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 their automation journey? Any any particular uh, advice or recommendations you'd give them? Yeah, I think uh, what uh, worked for us is what I would uh, basically preach. Right, uh, uh, don't uh, necessarily look at big banks. Uh, take something uh, small. Take something which is really achievable. Uh, show the early wins. And uh, it, it's just uh, a plain common sense. The uh, early wins is what is going to spur you uh, ahead. And don't necessarily look at uh, all of, uh, you know, trying to get into uh, too many technology spaces. Start with the basics. Uh, so it's absolute uh, plain common sense that I'm saying, Dan. Uh, it may really sound like I'm uh, preaching to the choir, but that's basically what it is. Start with the basics. Really have uh, some of your uh, early wins and use that to uh, build confidence and spur on uh, the more complex use cases, uh, look at the new technologies, have some safe playgrounds where uh, you're really able to show the uh, business uh, what is that uh, the technology can do. And uh, I think that's uh, pretty much what would uh, give you a higher chance of success when you're uh, trying to do automation in your industry or uh, in your company. Great. Edwin, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for uh, having me, Dan, and uh, have a good day ahead. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.